In this video, I have some intermediate advice for solving the first eight edges using free slice on the 6x6 and 7x7. In this video, I have a few intermediate tips and tricks for solving the first eight edges on big cubes using free slice. Um, the first important thing to note is that just like on the 5x5, five five, there aren't really any crazy advanced techniques for pairing up the first eight edges with free slice. Uh, rather, the majority of your improvement will come down to things like log ahead, turning speed, cube rotation speed, efficiency, and general ergonomics. That being said, there are some pieces of advice which you can use in your solves. Um, the first thing, uh, this is a really small thing, but something that I mentioned in the 5x5 tutorials is when you're finishing off your last two centers, that it's generally a decent idea to slice back um, to, to restore your centers because it doesn't take much time at all. And the possibility is that there's a large possibility that it, it might be faster to start your edge pairing on a different axis. However, on a 7x7, or on a 6x6, because we're doing these commutators, whereby to restore our centers, we might have to do a slice move. Slice moves are a little bit slower than just a standard outer face or a wide move. So in some cases, in most cases, it's actually better to not restore your centers with this slice move and then start pairing your edges perhaps on this axis. Um, this really depends. So if, for example, you've uh, done most of your final commutator and you have some pieces you know, in this layer, in this position or in this position, which are already paired up, um, it's a good idea to not slice back and just start solving with a rotation and pairing up your edges around this slice. However, if you're in this situation and you have, say, three pieces paired up in this position, then it's probably better idea. It's probably a better idea to slice back and then start pairing up around this axis, like so. This next tip is more applicable to the 7x7, and it's something that I've mentioned in the beginner tutorials, but I think it also applies to intermediate cubers, and that is you should try and store your first four edges on one face. So let's say you're doing free slice around here. You should store your four solved edges on one face such that so that when you flip over and you've solved all four, then you'll no, no, no longer need to access that face, and all the pieces that you're looking for for your next four edges are going to be in this layer or around the slice. However, the downside with storing four edges all on one face to begin with is that you will have to do some rotations between faces sometimes um, to find particular pieces which are part of the edges that you're solving because they won't necessarily always be accessible on this top face or around this inner slice, uh, around this slice. The only downside with forcing yourself to store four edges on one face at a time is if, for example, Let's say we've solved this one and we're going to solve these white and blue edges and I go ahead and insert that and from this position maybe I want to try and go ahead and solve the uh, yellow and green so I've got this one, this one and this one and what I want to do is very efficiently just take that out, saw this white and blue one up here and then go on and work on my yellow and greens but unfortunately in this case storing that one here has meant that this one and this one are stored on opposite sides now. And for example, to store it on this face and then return to solving the white and greens is a little bit inefficient and messes up the flow of the solve. However, the benefits are indeed quite large in that once you solve four edges on one face, like I said, you, only, you will never need to rotate or access that face again for the final four edges. The next tip is something you've probably heard before many times, uh, but it's particularly relevant to like edge pairing on big cubes, and that is to turn slowly and look ahead and solve pieces efficiently rather than turning super quickly and having lots of pauses in your edge pairing. Um, so for example, I guess one goal that you can try and have during your edge pairing is to never really stop turning. So never have more than like a one second pause and always just, you know, you can try and practice solving up, uh, solving edges and then not pausing at all and just continuing to go ahead and solve pieces. This can be kind of like a practice drill where you're just forcing yourself not to pause at all, basically. So always keep turning and keep solving. There's also a trade-off between picking something that is inefficient but which you can see straight away as opposed to searching around the cube for alternatives. So for example here, if I'm in this situation, I'm looking for an edge pair to solve, I've got these blue and uh, these green and red pieces, these two ones here. So I might just decide to go ahead and solve these two, look for some other pieces, so this green and red, this green and red, and then flip over the cube 
and use this green and red. And obviously that's not going to be like the most efficient solution in the world, but it's going to be a decent solution. Um, and I guess when I flipped over here, I can also see that I've got these white and green ones. So these two and this one. So I've got three edges in one, in one pair. And these two remaining white and, uh, white and green ones are here. And so obviously the more efficient solution was to find these and use these to solve the white and green edge. However, if we go back to the situation in which we were in before, there's not really any way in which we can quickly see and recognize that this white and green edge is going to be very easy to solve unless, in, unless we specifically look down at this bottom face. So the trade-off is between, you know, solving these ones and looking around the cube and spotting these. And in this situation, my general bit, my general advice for intermediate cubers is just to go ahead and, so, and start working on the things that you see straight away um, and not necessarily, you know, spend too much time. So don't pause for, you know, four or five seconds looking for what's going to be most efficient. Just do the things that you see. And then, you know, for example, if we were to go ahead and solve these white and greens, uh, these, these green and red, sorry, then when we flip over, to this side to solve this one, at that point we'll actually see we can use these and we'll use those in our next pair. Another really important thing that's going to help you look ahead is being able to pair up edge pieces without looking at what you're doing. So for example, we've got these blue and oranges, this blue and orange, this blue and orange, and this one. And what I want to do is, you know, pair them up together. And whilst I'm doing that, I know that, you know, in order to have a fast solve and fluid solve, then I need to be looking at other pieces around the cube whilst I'm pairing up these two, this one, this one, and this one. And so what I want to be able to do is get to a point where I can basically solve these five pieces blindfolded without looking. And that takes, again, a little bit of practice and uh, time to get familiar with how exactly I'm going to pair up all of these pieces and solve them blindfolded. But if you can get to that sort of stage, then you'll be able to, you know, spend your thought on, spend your energy and your thoughts on looking ahead as opposed to trying to work out how to actually solve these pieces. So I guess what I would do here is just, you know, slice this one across to get these two, insert those like that, and then I need, I know that I need to flip this and then slice this one across. And I know how to do all those moves without looking at it. So I can just, you know, flip this and move it across. And I'm really not looking at this at all. I'm looking around the cube for other pieces that I'm going to solve. And when I'm doing this, you know, because I'm not looking at this, I'm able to see that these, you know, red and greens come to this position. So I can go ahead and, you know, solve the red and green ones next. So just to reiterate, um, it's very important that when you're finishing off an edge piece, um, don't look at the pieces that you're currently solving. So I guess that, that's the meaning of look ahead, but it's very hard to actually practically do this in your solves. Um, and if you're not looking at the pieces which you're currently solving, um, there will be times where you do make mistakes and, you know, pair something up incorrectly, but those should disappear with time. Another thing to keep in mind is using the flipping algorithm to flip two pieces at once. So for example, if we're solving these green and red, so these three and this one, and this one up here, I guess the tendency might be to flip this in place, then slice, flip again, and then slice. So something like flip, slice, flip, slice. So let me just undo that. The more efficient way of tackling something like this is to actually bring these two outer wings into the same area so that when we flip them both, so when we do the flipping algorithm, it flips them both. And then we only need to do one flipping algorithm to pair up these edges. Again, something I mentioned in the 5x5 tutorials, but it's definitely relevant for free slice on the 6x6 and 7x7, is being able to insert edges into both the left slot, the right slot, so the two front slots, as well as insert edges into the back right slot. And if you're up for it, uh, even the back left slot, you can do uh, that sort of thing sometimes.